Hello, I'm Marion Fulker. I'm the CEO of Committee for Perth, WA's leading think tank. The Committee for Perth has a track record of delivering independent research on the issues that matter most to the people of Greater Perth, the impact of which drives positive structural, cultural and behavioural change across the region. Our approach is to undertake research projects for Perth by Perth. And our current project, The Future of Work, Equipping WA and its People for the Future World of Work, takes a whole of state perspective. The industrial revolution that is currently underway, 4.0 as it's commonly termed, is the most uh, comprehensively impactful and is happening at a rapid pace, much more than previous industrial revolutions. This 30 minute video will introduce you to the key findings of two recent surveys undertaken by Ipsos as part of the Future of Work project. Commissioned in September this year, members of the community from all walks of life across Western Australia were invited to share their views about the future of work. Additionally, another survey was conducted with 41 employee organisations across the state at the same time. And they were asked to look into the future to share potential impacts of technology on work. Welcome to Sally Braidwood, Director of Ipsos Corporate Reputation Centre, to share these findings with you. Over to you, Sally. So the research we're going to look at today is one of the inputs into the Committee's Future of Work project. And as we've seen evidenced by the Committee's fact-based bulletins over the last few months, the notion of the fourth industrial revolution and a technology disrupted jobs landscape in the future is really well documented. Technology is shaping work, it's shaping the workforce and it's shaping the workplace. And this pace of change is expected to accelerate over the next decade. Now forecasts of the net impact of this reshaping on jobs vary across global economies and across sectors. Some anticipate that the rise of automation will leave key segments of the workforce vulnerable to widespread redundancy, while others feel job losses will be offset by the creation of jobs that previously didn't exist. Now, where there is broad consensus, however, is that technology and automation will transform the sectors people work in, the roles they fulfill, and the skills that they need to be employable. And now, while these concepts are really well established globally, the committee's work, of course, is about putting that disruption into the context of Perth and Western Australia. So with this research, we set out to complement this extensive body of knowledge, the literature, the secondary data and the statistics that all exist with what's less readily available. And that's the contemporary Western Australian view that lived experience of these issues. So in particular, there were three broad things that we wanted to understand and I'll take you through those today. So the first is attitudes amongst the West Australian business and the workforce, attitudes towards technological change to really understand what have West Australians seen, what are they anticipating for the future, and how do they feel about technology quite broadly. Secondly, we wanted to look at how COVID has impacted West Australian businesses and the workforce, and also the impact that it's had on the uptake of technology. And finally, we wanted to understand the extent to which businesses and the workforce are preparing for the future of work, or indeed, the extent to which they see the need to prepare. So to do this, we spoke to two key audiences. We spoke to more than a thousand West Australians and they were either already in the workforce, they were seeking work or they were in training or education to join the workforce. And we also spoke to businesses via Committee for Perth members. So we captured the views of more than 40 senior business leaders. Combined, these two studies meant that we ended up with more than 50,000 data points to help us understand the future of work in the context of Western Australia. We'll take you through a few less than 50,000 in this session, uh, but give you some key takeouts to answer those three broad objectives. Now, we certainly started the research with a range of hypotheses about how West Australians feel about technology. And as we work through the data, a few of those hypotheses were challenged really quite early on. And they were challenged because for most of us, we see that technology is a really good thing. Two in three of us West Australians believe that technology has had a positive impact on our lives. Now, this is an intentionally broad question that we started with. It focuses on the impact of technology on our lives overall, rather than just in terms of how technology impacts us at work. So at this really broad level, we see the benefits. 
In terms of the specific positives that we see flowing from technology, we see that it's all about being connected and saving time. So put simply, technology makes our lives easier and it makes our lives better. And perhaps this is not at all surprising, of course, given the context that we're feeling more connected, the context of COVID we've all just experienced and many we're still experiencing that increased physical isolation from family, friends and colleagues. So we're using technology more than ever to stay connected. In terms of the negatives, they are still there, but they are smaller in proportion. And this is where we start to see some of those familiar tech clash related themes start to come through. So remembering it's just 8% of West Australians who see these negatives. Um, but the number one challenge that does rise to the top is the impact of technology on jobs and specifically the impact of automation being used to replace humans. So West Australians do acknowledge the risk of technology to jobs, but putting that in context, we see we're much more likely to see and focus on the positive impacts of tech, more technology, they're much more top of mind. We then did get more specific and asked those in the workforce specifically how the impact of technology has really shaped the way that they perform their jobs. And across these questions, we did find more variation in the data. And so that is, as we can see here, for some, technology is significantly changing the way they do their jobs. While we see for others, they see no impact at all. And we found that the workforce perceives the impact of technology actually declining over time. So we asked them to reflect back five or 10 years ago, and we saw that one in two said that in this time frame, technology had significantly or completely changed the way that they perform their jobs. Now we see this decline as we move up the page there. So 40% saw that change when they were thinking about the last five years. And then that declined to just 35% when we asked them to reflect back on the nine months since COVID. So this was another area where we saw some of our hypotheses start to be challenged. You no, know, the literature in this area has certainly put a lot of focus, there's been a lot of attention on COVID potentially advancing the impact of technology. So bringing forward changes that otherwise might have taken longer to implement and also to have workforces adopt in large numbers. But here we can see that from the experience of the West Australian workforce, the impact of technology was felt much more strongly 10 years ago compared to now, when we can actually see in that most recent timeframe, 42% feel that technology has had no impact on how they've performed their jobs since the onset of COVID. Now we can also look at those who said they've seen a big impact, a strong impact from technology and have a look at the sectors that they work in. And here we can see that it's professional services, construction and mining that emerge as the sectors most strongly impacted by technology. Now, the extent to which this does or doesn't align with the literature and other sources really points to that difference we're looking to understand, the difference between the literature and the human experience. So whilst these might not be the sectors that have actually experienced the greatest technological disruption over the last 10 years, these are the sectors where the WA workforce is most cognizant of the impact of technology. We did also find that the way we perceive the impact of technology is gendered. And we explored differences by gender, by age, and by metro versus regional location all throughout this study, because it's really well established, of course, that employment rates, employment conditions, sectors of employment, all of these things vary really significantly as a function of these base demographics. And so what we can see here is that across the three timeframes, it emerges that males are more likely than females to report technology as having significantly or completely changed the way they do their jobs. And the starkest difference between the genders is actually since the onset of COVID. So that 35% we saw previously, that increases to 42% among men compared to just 26% among women who say they've seen a significant impact from technology in how they work since COVID. We also see some age differences and it's quite interesting. So despite there being a strong relationship certainly between digital literacy and age, um, and an assumption perhaps that this may leave the older cohort more vulnerable to the impacts of technology, we actually see it's this oldest cohort of WA workers that's the least likely to say that they see technology as having significantly or completely changed how it is that they do their jobs. And that's true for both how they reflect on the, on the short and the medium history. 
Uh, interestingly, where we see no difference is in the perceived impact of technology. Um, we see no difference across locations. So whether I'm in Perth metro area and working or I'm working indeed in one of the regions of Western Australia, there is no difference in how I perceive technology as having impacted my job. So again, maybe we had a hypothesis that some regional jobs and vocations and some of those sectors may be less impacted, but no difference. Now, what we've looked at so far is the magnitude of the impact of technology and what impact that has been on jobs. Uh, but we haven't looked at what those changes are and, and whether they're positive or negative. So here, like with the impact of technology on life overall, with that broad level, we see here that when we're focusing in on the impact on jobs, the WA workforce is still much more likely to recognise the benefits from technology in how they work than the negatives. In terms of those positives, we see routine tasks have become faster. Perhaps as a direct result of that, we also see our capacity to perform, to perform complex tasks has increased. Um, and we feel we can work where and when we want and we're safer because of technology. Those negatives are felt less acutely. What we see come through though, 28% reflect back over the last decade and can see the number of people actually employed around us decreasing because of the impacts of technology. Just 16% though feel that they've had to upskill to stay in their employment because of technology. And right down the bottom there, just 6% report experiencing any difficulty, any difficulty adapting to new technology at work. Um, we do again though see some differences by gender and age here. The first one there we see women are more likely to see technology reducing the time they spend on routine tasks but they're not necessarily using this time to tackle more complex tasks. Instead, it's men that are more likely to be realising that benefit. And of course, this matters because it's this, our ability as humans to complete complex tasks that makes us more immune to the risk of having our job done by machines in the future. So currently women not realising that benefit of having more time due to technology in the same way that men are. And we also see older West Australian workers are experiencing more of the negatives from technology. But like we saw, it's not that they're struggling to keep up with technology, it's actually that they're more likely to have seen a reduction in headcount around them. Uh, they're less likely to feel like they have less support around them and they're also more likely to feel they're working longer hours because of the flexibility that comes with technology. Now this difference here may be reflective of the really significant impact the literature shows uh, that technology has had on clerical roles in the past few decades. And potentially it's this older workforce that maybe is more likely to have experienced this firsthand. So another key objective of the study that we mentioned at, at the beginning was to understand the impact of COVID on the WA workforce. Um, and here we had many of our hypotheses confirmed as opposed to having a few of them challenged in other areas. So the first thing we found is that it is indeed the casual workforce uh, that has felt the brunt of the impact of COVID on employment. And here the experience of the WA workforce, it really aligns with labour statistics. 74% of all casual workers have experienced some impact from COVID. They've had their hours and therefore their income cut, and they're the most likely segment to have had lost their job altogether. For permanent workers, that's both full-time and part-time. We see they've been impacted far less overall, just by that overall number. And in terms of how they've been impacted, they're much more likely to have undertaken voluntary measures. So that includes salary reductions and taking additional leave. Sole traders, we found sole traders and small business owners, they were the most likely segment to have accessed JobKeeper. So potentially suggesting here that this support mechanism has worked particularly well for this part of the economy. Now, this also reflects what we heard from the businesses that we surveyed. So we heard that voluntary measures were absolutely implemented quite broadly and that letting go of staff was indeed the last resort. And here you'll see we also asked business to project forward and to anticipate changes to their FTE workforce in the short and the medium term. And overall, we found that business is relatively optimistic with more than half seeing growth within the next five years. And as we see there, one in three actually seeing some growth in the immediate future. Importantly, though, despite this optimism from business that we do see, the workforce itself is feeling a heightened sense of instability. We see that one in five WA workers doesn't feel secure in their job right now. And this is compared to that 11% when they reflected back to how they felt in their jobs pre-COVID. 
Now, again, as you'll see on the right hand side of the slide there, we do see that this sense of insecurity is exacerbated amongst the casual workforce. We're currently 40%, nearly one in two, 40% are feeling insecure in their job. And this is not necessarily a new trend, though. We did see a much higher level of insecurity pre-COVID for casual workers as well. Perhaps not at all surprising, the data also shows that working from home peaked during the height of Western Australian COVID-related restrictions. Of course, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, what we also see, though, and also potentially not surprising, many of us may be experiencing this, we see that that shift to working from home has become really sticky. So the proportion who never work from home shrinking, we can see it shrunk by eight points compared to pre-COVID. So when or if we'll see a return to in-office working at pre-COVID rates is certainly a matter of great contention. Um, and this is compounded, as we see here, by the fact that the workforce sees a mix of pros and cons associated with this shift to working from home. We see the benefits are saved commuting time, a better balance, and some feeling that increased productivity from being at home as well. But we do see the negatives come through and things like that reduced social interaction and potentially being more isolated at home and also finding it hard to switch off. So yes, some may be getting better balance, but for others, having work and home integrated is a challenge when it comes to trying to get it back into that home life. So with WA Business and the workforce, touch wood, I will say that having hopefully weathered the worst of the COVID related storm, we really wanted to look forward when we were doing this research. And we wanted to understand how or if a business and the workforce were preparing for a future with increased technological impact. Now, what emerged is that the WA workforce does see the impact of technology increasing in the future. So one in two expects that technology will significantly or completely change the way they work in the next decade. And as we see on the right there, this is as high as 69% for those in financial and insurance services and 64% for those in professional services. Now, again, it's important to flag that these are not necessarily the sectors that experts in the literature expect to see the greatest disruption from technology. But again, what this highlights is that potential disconnect between what's happening at a macro level and what's actually being experienced and what we're conscious of on the ground when it comes to the WA workers and their experience. So we then asked the workforce to tell us in their own words what changes they expected to come from that increase in technology in the future. And what we see here is there is a recognition of the increase in automation. But for most, what we see is it's actually linked to positive outcomes like improved systems, uh, increased efficiency and better productivity. We see it's just 6% there at the bottom in the pink that cite this explicit risk to their job or their skill set. Something else to note here is you'll note these percentages that we're looking at, they're quite low. They start at just 14%. And this means that when we asked the workforce to tell us in their own words, what are the, uh, the impacts that they're going to see from technology in the future, there were many very narrow responses to this question. And it was actually really challenging to group or theme them together. And this lack of shared and well-established language among the workforce to articulate this risk posed by technology, this further suggests that these concepts are not well established. We don't have a language to use around them. So potentially parts of the workforce haven't recognised this as a challenge yet. Or also for some who may have recognised it as a challenge, these low rates show us potentially that risk is not really being appreciated. Now, this view is further supported by the fact that when we prompt with a list of potential impacts from technology in the future, we do see a greater appreciation of the negative impacts of technology. Still though, for the workforce, the expected pros of technology outweigh the cons. And it's these common themes that we do see rise to the top, those benefits like efficiency, flexibility, the re reduced need to travel. Um, but we do see these low levels of concern around technology leading to reduced headcounts and also that need to upskill to, um, to avoid redundancy. And what's more, our anticipation of how technology will impact our jobs in the future, it's largely consistent, irrespective of gender, age, location, occupation, sector. Now, the fact that this isn't varying to reflect the fact that there are very different risks across all of these as a factor of age, gender, location, occupation, etc. Again, this really starts to confirm that knowledge is relatively shallow around these issues amongst the WA workforce. Now, this lower recognition of the risks to jobs posed by technology may also reflect and be a function of the types of technology that have been adopted by West Australian businesses to date. 
or potentially the technologies that are perceived to have been adopted or that the workforce is aware of. So here, this is a view of, from the workforce. In yellow, we can see their perception of the technologies that they see as having already been adopted in their business um, in the recent history. And in the blue, we see the technology they believe that will be adopted in the future. And so we see that some of the most disruptive forms of technology in terms of their impact on jobs, like artificial intelligence and robotics and virtual reality, all of these types of technology, they show those low levels of past adoption, but high levels of anticipated future adopt adoption. Conversely, what we see is the workforce is most aware of technology like mobile apps and cloud services, which arguably pose much lower risk to human roles. So if it is uh, in reality or in the minds of the, uh, of the workforce, if it is that the dis biggest disruption from technology is really still to come, the ability of the WA workforce to be uh, agile and adapt is really critical. Now, encouraging, encouragingly, what we did find in the data is that there's evidence of the WA workforce being agile. So we see here that more than one in two told us that they had changed sectors over their working life. And we found that even more said they changed occupations over their career. Importantly as well, we see that for most, the impact of this change, the end outcome, has been largely positive. So nearly two in three say that they feel their new roles are fulfilling, they make the most of their experience and their training and education. Importantly though, when we dig further into this agility, we see that technology hasn't been the key driver of change in the past. So despite what we saw with that more than half of the workforce saying they changed sector or role during their career, we see that less than one in five actually did so due to the impacts of technology specifically. And really this puts that past impact of technology on the WA workforce even further into context. We then looked closer at those who did change sectors or role due to technology. And we found that 62% of them had to undertake additional training to make this change. And this training was a mix of really pretty strong and even mix of the types of training. So tertiary, vocational, technical and professional development there. And really this starts to highlight that 62 to 62% really starts to highlight that potential gap that many of those impacted by technology in the future will face when they have to reskill to get back into the labour market. And if we're going to see more roles become redundant through the rise of technology, it raises the very important question of who actually bears the responsibility and the onus of assisting those impacted to get back into the workforce. On the left of this slide, we can see how those who did actually change sectors in the past due to technology and required that training, we see how they actually funded that training. And for the majority, it was self-funded. And this is contrasted by what we see on the right, which is the response from the WA community when we asked, in the case of traditional roles being displaced through the rise of technology, who does bear the responsibility to retrain those individuals impacted? And here we see there's a clear expectation for, for employers, for industry, to bear this cost. Currently, expectations of government to step into this role are pretty low. Uh, arguably, this may provide a window to get ahead of public expectation and for government to lead in that development of public policy to really start to future-proof the WA economy, given these changes, which are well evidenced to be, to be on the way. Uh, at this point, we can do a quick run through, I guess, of some and round up some of those other gender and age differences that we did see that are really worth summarising. So here we've just gone a bit deeper into this difference at, at the gender level. So we can see that for females, they're both less likely to recognise the impact of technology on how they've worked over the last decade. And they're also less likely to see significant impact on the horizon. And here we're potentially seeing more alignment between uh, the literature um, and the experience of the workforce. So certainly as our data shows and aligns with other external data as well, female workers dominate healthcare and social assistance and also education and training, those two sectors. And these are certainly two sectors which are widely recognised as being less at threat from major technological disruption. So of course, the flip side of this is what we see amongst the male workforce. Uh, and here we do see that males are much more likely to recognise the risk of technology. And here we can break it down into a bit more detail. So we see compared to women, uh, male workers are more likely to see the need to retrain in the future to stay in their industry. And they're more likely to see their job as at risk from machines, from outsourcing and also from digital services. 
So we do see amongst the male workforce this increased sense of the potential negative impact from technology on the horizon. However, interestingly, what we also see is that currently males in the workforce are no more likely than their female counterparts to be undertaking training or education to improve their employability. So I guess that first step of the journey is there in recognising the challenge that is on the horizon, but potentially a missing link is knowing what to do to, uh, to minimise that risk. The younger cohort, they're the most aware of and also the most prepared for the future. So it's actually these digital natives among the workforce that recognise the impact of technology and they're actively preparing for the way they'll need to adapt to be, to be valuable and employable in a tech-influenced workforce. Um, so under this under 35 segment, they're also the most likely to feel secure in their jobs since COVID. So 77% currently feel secure in their jobs compared to 50, 63% of 55 plus year olds. So the trend was different pre-COVID. Now post-COVID, we're seeing that it's this younger cohort who are feeling most secure in their jobs. Now, potentially, this could be a sign of this workforce having that increased agility and that ability to adapt uh, because they are more conscious of the future of work already. Now, importantly, despite the overall lower perceived risk from technology that we do see across WA workers as a whole, when we ask the question, we still see that nearly one in two intends to change sectors in the future, and 21% of these intend to make that change in the next two years. Now, again, the industries that those in the survey are most likely to be changing out of, financial services and professional services, tourism, these are not necessarily the sectors that are identified externally by experts as being the most likely to be impacted by technology in the future. So indeed, as the impacts of technology accelerate over the next decade, there's the potential for many who fall outside of this group at the moment. So many WA workers who currently aren't anticipating changing sectors in the, in the near future, there's that um, potential that they'll be forced with a, they'll be faced with a forced move as the impact of technology starts to increase. Now to round out our view of the future impact of technology and how the workforce is or perhaps isn't preparing, it's really important to understand the intentions of business. So macro forces, of course, like climate change, globalization and anti-globalization uh, and the aging of, the, uh, of world populations have really shaped and continue to shape global economies. And so we asked our business leaders around these big trends, how have they impacted their business? And it's really clear to see We'd start with globalisation. While it's brought increased opportunity, that reversal to a more localised model of anti-globalisation, it poses a threat to WA businesses, uh, particularly if this is really accelerated in the short term because, of course, of the restrictions in global movement that we're seeing from COVID. We see that the ageing population has generated opportunities, most likely for those in the sectors directly servicing this growing market. 22% of businesses, though, did tell us they're grappling with this challenge from an ageing population and most likely linked to that challenge that flows through to the availability of the working population and labour availability. Climate change is polarising, bringing as many opportunities as limitations for WA businesses. Now, of course, the relevance of these macro forces to our study is the common theme of technology as a solution to managing for these issues. So we see that 95% of the business leaders we spoke to said that technology has a really crucial role to play in their ability to adapt to these future conditions. Now, the implications of this, they're multifarious in reality, but for our purposes, two implications are quite relevant. The first global trends, these macro forces, they're further entrenching the role of technology in our lives and making that increased impact from technology on how we work even more inevitable. And this in turn underscores the need that we've established for the WA workforce to start to prepare for the future of the, the, the jobs of the future. The second impact here is that given the established link between technology and the redundancy of some traditional roles, it's imperative that business manages this impact really closely. We saw earlier that currently business and industry is really bearing the the brunt and you know the, the large share of the responsibility in being seen to have to retrain those who are negatively impacted by technology. And so of course we also know that employment generation is a key pillar of social license. So arguably those businesses and industries that really invest in making this transition from traditional to future jobs as smooth as possible and minimizing job losses, it's those businesses that will be in turn taking steps to reduce future reputational risk. 
So we took you through some of those 50,000 data points, but just to recap very quickly. Um, so remembering what we saw. So despite this really well-documented challenge to traditional work that's posed by technology in the fourth industrial revolution, what we see amongst the WA workforce is really only limited levels of concern. In fact, we saw they're much more likely to recognise the benefits of technology to how they work than to recognise the threat that it may pose to their jobs. We also saw that the WA workforce reports relatively low levels of adoption of some of those most disruptive forms of, of technology. And so this may really start to account for some of that general positivity about the impact that we see of work on of technology on work to date. We also saw that the WA workforce is somewhat agile. So more than 50% have changed sectors or roles in the past, but certainly only one in five did so due to the impacts of technology. So here with technology not being that key driver of past change, we can understand more why that perceived future risk is really moderate. Where we saw just 33% believing that they'll need to retrain to stay in their current sector and 22% believing their job could be done by a machine in the future. We saw that younger cohort that they're the most aware of and prepared for the future of work. They're recognising the impact of technology and starting to really prepare for how they will need to adapt to really operate into a, a more tech influenced workplace. We saw for female workers that they dominate those two sectors, so healthcare and social assistance and education and training. And these, of course, are two of the sectors that are most recognised as being somewhat less at threat from major technological disruption. So as a result, we did see that females were less likely to have seen past technological impact on how they've worked over the last decade, and they're less likely to see that impact or potential impact on the horizon. Still though, a lack of preparation could leave these sectors and these workers vulnerable to those broader impacts of technology, which are arguably inevitable across every sector. And finally, we saw that it's males that are more likely to actually be recognising the threat from technology. So whilst they're further on that journey of recognising a challenge, they're no more likely to be undertaking training to improve their employability. So that gap between recognising the issue and knowing what to do about it still hasn't been filled. Now, if we turn this into, I guess, next steps or implications, this potential disconnect that we're seeing between the literature, the intention of business that we saw to really embrace and continue to embrace technology, that disconnect there with local experiences of the workforce, the challenge, of course, is this, that this leaves the WA workforce vulnerable to those challenges to traditional work that are very, very likely to impact our economy, are already impacting many economies around the world in, in, to really increase in the short and medium term. So the challenge then becomes for government and industry to lead in the preparation of the WA economy for the future of work, but in doing so, striking a balance between encouraging the workforce and, you know, broader industry and business to really prepare whilst of course not generating alarm at what the future of technology may mean for jobs of the future. Thank you, Sally, for uh, what has been a 30 minute run through of the highlights of the 50,000 data points. Really appreciate that, thank you. Thank you, Marion. So in closing, the two surveys have given us a wealth of information, generating, as Sally said, some 50,000 data points and these, along with research already released and yet to be published, will inform a report with actionable recommendations which will help equip, equip WA and its people for the future world of work. We are aiming to have that report released in September next year. To keep up to date with this project and any of our research, you can do so at our website, committeeforperth.com.au, where all of this is available free of charge.